So earlier this year, you had the national championship with Zach Eady and Purdue versus Connecticut. And Purdue gets walloped, but Zach Eady has 37 points. And up until then, a lot of people in college basketball were very polar and divisive on Zach Eady, calling him a free throw merchant. And then you had a lot of haters saying, oh, well, his game might not translate to the NBA. Sorry, his game won't translate to the NBA. And as someone that watches mainly NBA, not college basketball, I didn't, I don't remember where exactly I was on the fence of this. I didn't say, I don't think I said he was unplayable. If I said he was unplayable, then that's definitely on me. I was watching and reading all these NBA draft boards and some people had him lottery and some people had him second round, like mid second round. I can't remember the last time I seen a prospect divide a lot of NBA draft scouts in terms of just that far being like, oh yes, lottery pick. Actually, I have a mid second round. Like there were so many people and the second round of the NBA draft is really hard to do where it's like, okay, you have these people that play overseas that might not come over for a season or two. It's really hard to uh, do a mock draft for the entire draft, I guess. But the Zach Eady thing really intrigued me because it was just like, whoa, I don't actually know where he stands because you have a lot of people being like, he doesn't fit in today's NBA. And yeah, so I was just watching the draft, not really worried about where Zach Eady would fall because I don't really worry about players like that. I was very curious. And then with the ninth pick, Memphis Grizzlies select Zach Eady. And there was a part of me that was like, nine feels really high. I mean, people were saying how indicative of a bad draft class it was, et cetera, et cetera. And I was just like, nine, top 10 pick for Zach Eady. And a decade ago, no brainer, no question at all, right? He was a, he's a two time national player of the year or something. I don't really have his college basketball accolades memorized, but he's been a dominant force in the basketball world for a long time in terms of college basketball. Got his team to the national championship, got his team to some deep playoff runs. I think he was on that St. Peter's team that lost. Did Purdue play St. Peter's? It just mixes, oh, uh, it just mixes up. Purdue, was Zach Eady on the team that lost to the 16 seed? All right, anyway, that's not the point. The point is, is that I had been thinking about this all wrong. And it kind of, and I was kind of reminded that I thought about the Zach Eady thing all wrong when I was watching him play in preseason. I know this video is me going off of preseason stuff, but bear with me. It's not a, a take. It's just stuff I'm curious about. If you're new here, welcome in. And if you know me, welcome back. My name is Kofi. I specialize in sports, video games, sports travel, everything in between. I would appreciate it if you did follow, join our nice, wholesome, basketball-loving, sports-loving community. If you don't, that's fine. I hope you see you again. If you if this video is not your cup of tea, I totally get it. But if it is your cup of tea, then follow for more tea. And I feel like we often think about the draft sometimes where we'll see a player play how he does in college and we immediately assume that they're only going to play that way in the pros or try to play that way in the pros. And that's why this whole Memphis thing really makes sense to me in terms of their addition and having Zach Eady. And it's something that I'm actually really excited about. Now, Memphis fans, Memphis Grizzlies fans, I know you guys had a really weird season. John Morant only played like a handful of games after that 25 game suspension. And then like so many players on your team were hurt. And the Detroit Pistons still lost to a team that was missing nine or so players. It was something along that level. Desmond Bain was just like, I will not let us lose to this Detroit Pistons team. And again, once again, I have, I have put the Detroit Pistons back into a video because that's just how terrible the season was. Anyway. But you know, you see Zach Eady and seen how he played in college and he was a post dominant player that had to deal with a lot of double teams. The most important thing for me that stood out was that Zach Eady, the center of attention, he is the game plan on both offense and defense. On offense, get the ball to Zach Eady and good things will happen, right? And on defense, it's off dude we how are we gonna stop zach Eady? and then you look and you realize that you have college basketball players that are not well equipped to uh not all well equipped not all college basketball teams have someone to deal with a 7-4 i don't know how much he weighs but a behemoth of a man not many college basketball teams have that now the yukon huskies that's different they had nba talent and they have an absolute wizard of a coach in Dan Hurley, where I see him call plays, I get really excited. It's just basketball wizard.
But I, I really sat there and thought about it last week, over the week, had Summer League, and I was like, Zach Eady is going to a team where he's not going to be the focal point of an offense. He's not the number one option. And I think that that's going to be a really good thing for him in his career. He's not going to a team that is being like asking him to be everything and every, everything and anything, right? He's not going to, I don't even think I can name a team where he would be that. The Wizards have Jordan Poole and Kuzma right now. The Spurs have Wemby, the Horn. Like every NBA team that Zach Eady would be on that is in my mind right now would not ask him to be the number one or even the number two option on their team in Memphis what is he for so you gotta deal with John Morant Desmond Bain Jaron Jackson Jr. and some other players before you even get to Zach Eady and that's what makes me so excited about ED being on Memphis is that the game is going to come pretty easily to him because NBA teams are going to be so busy dealing with the other players on the squad. Look at that. A pick and roll with Ja Morant and Desmond Bain stretching the floor. Jaron Jackson Jr. stretching the floor. It's going to be like, oh, Jaron Jackson. Oh, Ja Morant. Desmond Bain. Oh, by the way, Zach Eady's seven foot four and has great touch, by the way. And I think the thing about this is that the modern NBA game, you know, the math, I'm big into analytics and math. I'm big into all of that. But I think, I believe that you can get two. Basketball is a computer. Basketball is a numbers game. I believe that. But I'm not one of those people that think that analytics don't matter or looking into data doesn't matter, looking into stats doesn't matter. But I think that we I've just been like thinking too much about modern basketball and forgetting about why basketball is the way that it is today is that it evolves there are trends stuff changes rules change things happen and i have to think that just because there's a trend in basketball doesn't mean that every archetype of player or certain archetypes of players just cannot work and the thing about zach Eady is that not only is zach Eady going off against the ever-growing opinion of college basketball being so different that if you're this dominant in college basketball you're not really going to be that good in the nba because you've spent so much time in the nba college basketball is a different game which is true college basketball is a different game but i think with the growing view of college basketball being like oh man these are just different sports the nba is just leagues apart like and not only that i feel like zach Eady has to deal has had to deal with the fact that there have been a lot of players not i'm not gonna say that play like him but have that same have had that same archetype and it just has not worked out like we we look at how jaleel okafor plays or how Jaleel Okafor played. And please, college basketball fans or fans, don't don't say that like Jaleel Okafor and Zach Eady don't play the same. You know what I mean? Like specifically inside scoring big men, that their face up game goes to a point where you you know what I'm saying. But like there have been so many different big man busts over the recent years. Whether it's uh, again Jaleel Okafor, I'm not even gonna say Hashim Thabit because they don't play the same. Zach Eady is way more polished talented than Ashim the beat but I think we're at a point in the NBA where as soon as you get over a certain height that a lot of players are like mm, I think you might be too tall for the NBA and hear me out it's like seven foot two seven foot three like when you get like a taco fall right taco fall even though he's seven foot six not good enough for the nba it like goes against like what he, like i didn't look at taco fall and be like that's sean bradley you know what i'm saying um i think that that's kind of what i'm getting at here you know you think of a uh, bobon where it's like bobon is gonna give you like 12 minutes a night maybe like it, it, uh, anyway this video is sponsored by homefield homefield has premium vintage apparel for over a hundred 180 colleges, including your favorite teams. They have everything from t-shirts and hoodies to bomber jackets, softball pullovers, and much, much more. As you can see here, I'm wearing part of the shooting shirt collection. This is USC. Homefield takes vintage logos and makes masterful art with each and every part of their collection. Each piece really peers into the school's history through their unique logos, mascots, and iconic moments. Whatever your college, whatever your style, Homefield definitely has something for you. Whether you're surprising someone with a gift or getting something cool to help you root for your favorite team, Homefield has it all. I've been wearing Homefield for years now and it's hands down some of the most comfortable and high quality stuff that I wear. Check out their website and don't forget to use my code 
Kofi15 for 15% off of your first purchase. That's Kofi15 for 15% off your first purchase at Homefield. Like Zach Eady, I think, gets typecast because he's 7 foot 4. He gets typecast into players that are his height but don't exactly play like him. And I think that he's going to change that. He's going to change a lot of people's like minds about that because yeah, Zachy is probably not going to get as many touches as he did in college basketball, but he is definitely going to have an impact on this Memphis Grizzlies team. And I think that the ceiling is pretty high. And this all has to go with some other thing because by the way, if you weren't paying attention to Memphis Grizzlies basketball, you will realize that the Memphis Grizzlies midseason, midway, traded Steven Adams. Now, Steven Adams is an important factor to this Grizzlies team, and the addition of Zach Eady makes so much sense with the departure of Steven Adams because Steven Adams was a really good rebounder, especially on the offensive end of the glass, a really good rebounder. And that's why he paired so well with Jaron Jackson is because... Jaron Jackson Jr. has rebounding deficiencies. We saw that was apparent when we had the Team USA, when Jaron Jackson Jr. was on that Team USA team that like kind of under, that very underachieved. And you looked and like, oh, this team can't really rebound for anything. Now, Jaron Jackson's a great player, like the guy, but statistically the rebounding is lacking when you compare it to other people. So the Grizzlies, I think that they are may be anticipating that Zach Eady can go and fill that role. Get the rebounds, set these screens for Ja, get some easy buckets. I think that he can do that, and I think that if that's all that Memphis is asking for of him, he's going to have a great time there, right? Because you got Ja Morant, you got Desmond Bain. Ja Morant is going to give you a lot of easy buckets, and it's going to be fun. And I think Desmond Bain will as well. Maybe we just overthought the Zach Eady thing. I Maybe I did, because I looked at Zach Eady and was like, I don't know, man, is he quick enough to, and I got into the just the standard line of questioning, is he quick enough to keep up with these guards in the pick and roll? And I forgot to ask the question, are some of these NBA bigs equipped to handle Zach Eady? Because I know that's not for, and it's not for nothing. Miles Turner is not the best interior defender. He's a good shot blocker, but not like the best post-up defender. I watched Zach Eady like just drop step and dunk on him. And I was just like, oh shit. Like it's not, it's one of those things where it's like, and Zach Eady also has experience passing out of double teams because he's seen it for the past two or three seasons. Zach Eady, un unironically, Zach Eady at Purdue has been given a lot of tools that help him in today's NBA in terms of just like being able to pass out of double teams, being able to be a smart post player. Because like, not like post play is extinct. There's more of an emphasis on getting more sh three point shots and more layups, but it's not like post play is extinct. Now, there's a couple things I saw from preseason is that, and Zach Eady's going to definitely learn this you got a shot blot a couple times because you know the, the timing and getting used to players that can actually like really springboard up off the floor and then when he when he brings the ball low he's brought he brought the ball low a couple of times but like the turnovers haven't been that uh astounding so i think that these are all things the dude showed great touch you know that didn't go away you saw the jump hooks you saw the close finishing at the basket like and if that's all that memphis needs him to do then they're gonna have a great time and over the, over the course of a couple seasons if they ask him to do a, a little bit more that's totally fine as well uh we saw zach Eady attempted a three in preseason which was like pretty sick i think he made one in college or something he made a couple in college i think but seeing zach Eady like not be afraid to attempt a three the fact that there's like room to grow for him i'm very excited about so you know what you know what zach i'm very curious about you as a player i think that you're gonna have a great time in memphis i think memphis is a very good fit for you as a basketball player and i'm really excited to see what's next because yeah well of course when i when i saw him picked ninth i was like oh but then i thought about it and then i saw some glimpses and of course maybe one Maybe I'm just like overreacting, being like, oh, it's preseason. You saw this and now you're talking about it because everybody, whatever. But no, I really looked at it and was like, you know what? I think that there's something here. And not like, I'm not talking about all-star stuff. I'm not, I'm not immediately declaring that, but I think he's going to be just fine. And it's okay for NBA players to be just fine. How about that? Thank you guys for watching the end of the video. Feel free to like, subscribe, uh, comment on what you think about Zach Eady have any other video topics feel free to let me know and i'll see you guys in the next video have a good one y'all goodbye